The usual gridlock of Toronto gets a change of pace as the annual Indy Weekend takes over Canada's biggest city. Time to get ready for the roar of NASCAR on TSN. With three races in the book, the NASCAR Pinty Series points battle is as tight as ever. LP Dumoulin won at CTMP in May. In June, Lacroix conquered the crown jewel, while Ranger raced the high line to victory at Chaudière. Now who will it be in July? Canada's series takes over the lakeshore. The NASCAR Pinty Series is proudly domestic, yet not domesticated. It's time for the Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto. The True North Strong and Fast has rolled into Toronto for the 2018 edition of the Pinty's Grand Prix. An interesting track here at the CNE grounds, 2.87 kilometers and 11 turns, and it's always challenging. It's been hosting events here since 1986. We're in for an interesting race for sure today. I'm Dave Bradley, along with me is Adam Ross in the booth, and we'll check in with both Todd Lewis and Clinton Jeffrey, who'll both be patrolling the pits for us here today. But Adam, like I say, it's always a great race here at the Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto. And this street course has so many variables as it is, let alone with weather in the area, passing showers. We don't know what these teams are going to come up against today, but we know it's going to be an entertaining race. Now, we've been seeing some raindrops at times here today, but let's take a look at the Pinty's Point standings. He has a win at CTMP, a seventh place at Jucasa, and then coming up a run or coming off a runner-up finish at Autodrome Chaudière. That's propelled the number 47 of LP Dumoulin to top spot in the point standings. But it's not a big margin. He's just seven points up on the youngster Cole Powell, and then a tie for third between Andrew Ranger and Mark Antoine Cameron, who are only eight points back. The top six in points are extremely tight, but with the nature of street racing, when things happen, they tend to happen big. I have a feeling we're going to see a big change in the leaderboard after today. With more on your points, sitter, let's say hello today to Todd Lewis. Todd? Thanks, Dave. The 47 of LP Dumoulin will roll off sixth for today's race. Spoke to him just a couple of moments ago. He said the car was a bit loose during qualifying yesterday. They have made changes to tighten it up, and they feel good about the car with the changed track conditions for today. More good news for Dumoulin competition. They have extended their agreement with WeatherTech Canada. The 39-year-old from Trois-Rivières, Quebec, and WeatherTech Canada will partner for an additional three seasons. Good news for Dumoulin competition, for WeatherTech Canada, and the Pinty Series. LP hoping to take that positive mojo to the front today. And that is good news indeed, Todd. It's great to see a longtime supporter of Canadian motorsports looking long term here in Canada. But if we look at the E3 spark plugs pull qualifying from yesterday, an interesting battle between several cars in the first group anyway. It was a wild session. Kevin Lacroix went out, set fast time on the very next lap in turn number seven. He clipped the inside wall and slammed the outside wall, sent the car careening into turn eight into the tire barrier. Thankfully, the 29-year-old from Quebec climbed out of the car under his own power. Definitely a heavy hit. Once the track was finally cleared up, it was the number 18 of Alex Tagliani who put the Rona EpiPen Chevrolet in top spot, grabbing the E3 Spark Plugs Pole Award. That's his ninth career NASCAR pole. And with more on the state of that 74 car, let's head down to Clinton Jeffrey. Clinton? Thanks, guys. The 74 Dodge LaCroix could not be repaired. As soon as the wrecker got back to the pack, the team made a deal with 22 Racing to borrow their backup car for the weekend. Don Thompson Jr. and the crew worked hard all day to get this car ready to race here. As for the driver, Kevin's a previous winner here. He never lacks in confidence. So watch for the 74 to work its way from the back here today on the streets of Toronto. And Clint, that car that Steckley handed over is no typical backup car. That's the race car Mark Antoine Cameron almost won this race with last year. It's going to be fun to watch that 74 work his way up through the field. Let's get things underway. Let's send it down trackside for today's command. Driver, start your engine. Wade Stazer gives the command we've been waiting for. There's Alex Tagliani. He's going to have the best view in the house, Dave. And a great field of good-looking race cars here today. Mark Antoine Cameron expected to contest for the win here today. Could we see the 22 in victory lane when the day is done? There's so many cars we could see in victory lane. 
Jason White, the Powder Ventures number 21, will be on board with that race car here this afternoon. And there's a good look at Gary Clute, always has a shot at the win. Another favorite, and here's a youngster to the series, second in points, Cool Powell in the three. He'll do a lot of learning here today as we'll take a look at your WeatherTech starting lineup as the cars roll off the pit road here today. There's your pole sitter, Alex Tagliani in the 18, Mark Antoine Cameron will start alongside in row number one. Looking at row number two, Andrew Ranger in the 27 and the 74 of Blackwell. Back to row three, Anthony Simone in the 95, along with Gary Clute, who we had a look at. LP Dumoulin alongside brother J.F. Dumoulin in row four. Taking a look back to row number five, we have the 0-2 carry mix. Great qualifying effort there. And Peter Klutz behind the wheel of the 42. Row six is DJ Kennington in the Castrol Dodge, and Cole Powell is in the three. Back to the seventh row, we've got Brent Taylor from Calgary, Alberta, and Donald Teague from Boisetel, Quebec. Row number eight, Larry Jackson and Adam Martin. Looking back one more row to row number nine. That's where we find Jason White in the number 28. James Vance will be one to watch here today in the number one. Row 10, all by himself, the 79 of Pete Shepard III making his first start on a road course. That's how they line up, Dave, and let's have a look at the E3 Spark Plugs race analysis. 35 laps, and you're looking at the storyline on the right and the left side of your screen. Concrete walls on both sides all the way around this racetrack. And a sprint race, no pit stops required here today, so it's on the gas right from the get-go. Let's take a look at where we are. Toronto is the fourth largest city in North America. We're on the shores of Lake Ontario for race number four, the 2018 calendar. This 11 turn. 2.8 kilometer street circuit. There it is, one of two in the series has four distinct passing zones. Yeah, Dave, turn one is the first opportunity, heavy braking, and that sets you up for the long Lakeshore Boulevard straightaway. Heavy braking again into turn number three, and then turn five gives these drivers a chance to make a move. Let's go to Todd. Fellas, the start of the race is always important. I was speaking with Mark Antoine Cameron a couple of minutes ago, and he said, I've been thinking about the start of this race since last night. He starts on the outside of row one. He wants to get ahead of Alex Tagliani, knows they can go into corner one side by side, but he's concerned about the 27 of Andrew Ranger. What if he tries an inside move? He's got to get back in line. Focus on the front, especially headed to corner one. But it's going to be exciting as the field lines up two by two. Preparing for the start, 35 laps. The set distance here for the Pinties Grand Prix on the streets of Toronto. A large crowd on hand for this Indy weekend as the stars of the NASCAR series in Canada get set to go to green. Tagliani spikes the throttle, gets some separation there. Watch this field accordion back together. These are the tight corners as you work through now turn number 10. You'll see a left-hander. That's turn number 11. After that, you're on to the front straightaway and onto the grass looking for the green flag. Side by side, you see Cameron get very close to Alex Tagliani. The field bunches up nicely. And the green flag is up. We're underway. Fantastic start by Alex Tagliani to run the racing line into turn number one. Everybody else side by side. Working their way down this ultra long Lakeshore Boulevard. Turn three is a great passing opportunity as you see the field starting to fan out. The 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron has fallen way back through the first two turns. Big problem for Cameron. I don't see any smoke out of the car. Not sure what happened on that start, but he went from the front row almost out of the top 10. He mentioned he wanted to get to the inside. He did not do so. Stuck up on the outside and got free trained in the early going. There's a look at James Vance in that black number one. He had a great start. He started most of the way at the back. How about Jason White and the racing White family? Jason here racing on the streets in Toronto. The rest of the family out west racing super modified. Total of eight White family members racing these this weekend. It's pretty incredible as we have a good battle waging there between the three of Cole Powell and the one of James Vance. Remember, Vance had a pretty good run at the season opening race at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Let's, let's have a look. Mark Antoine Cameron down into turn one. That's Ranger going by. There's turn number two and a bump against the wall. Wow. 
so he clipped the inside wall from the sounds of it. it. Looks like he clipped it with a significant pace, so that knocked him back in the pack. You saw the 74 of Kevin Lacroix is on pit lane, obviously, but on scheduled stop. Todd, what's going on there? Flat left rear tire is the problem on that 74. This weekend just got tougher for that 74 team. We're going to work to change it. The good news, it's early on. They haven't lost a lap. It'll still be an opportunity for Kevin Lacroix to have a good weekend. And the laps are long here, so that gives them time in the pits as well as they see a great battle now between the 47-year points leader of LP Jubilee and the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. of Cameron were riding along. There's an in-car shot. Same with the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. It really gets in your head as you see some fuel out the overflow of LP Dumoulin's number 47. But when things don't go the way you plan, when you lose all that track position, it can take some real focus to get back on track and get to get to focusing on what you need to be doing. Some drivers just get angry. They get up in the seat, their elbows out, and they make the charge back up towards the front. And you saw that's what Cameron was trying to do as we ride on board with Andrew Ranger, the only back-to-back -back winner here on the streets of Toronto. If we get a chance again, watch how quickly his arm moves to the shifter knob. That was something else. You're watching NASCAR racing on the streets of Toronto. From beautiful downtown Toronto, this NASCAR on TSN broadcast is brought to you by Mopar. We built it. We know it. My E3 spark plugs. Born to burn. And by Pinty's. Making great food fun. Working lap six of a scheduled 35 here in the Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto. Alex Tagliani continues to lead the Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger. This is a good battle that we've been watching for several laps now for six spot. Mark Antoine Cameron has not been able to outbreak LP Dumoulin. He's tried numerous times going down into turn three at the end of Lakeshore Boulevard. Listen to these things wind up, Dave. I mean, there is nothing else here this weekend that sounds like a NASCAR race car at full song down Lakeshore Boulevard. It does sound fantastic. And these top three drivers, look at who is sitting in third. And we haven't talked about him yet. The number 95 of Anthony Simone having a great run. Here. And Simone was fastest in the practice session yesterday. So we shouldn't be surprised that he's racing this well. What he really needs, Dave, is a finish. He <laughs> needs... Shown He's shown speeds in so many different places, so many racetracks, as we're on board with the driver from Calgary, Alberta, Brett Taylor. He's doing a nice job. That's Cole Powell, second place in the points that he's chasing around these streets. Justin's Rookie of the Year candidate is Brett Taylor, and he seemed quite comfortably working through the gears. And now into turn eight, looking at turn nine, chasing the three of Cole Powell. He's also got Pelodi on the trunk plate of that race car. They've got a great display here this weekend. That CBRT team really goes all out for the Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto, Dave. Looking a little bit deeper in the field, there is the 0-2 of Kerry Mix. The 42 of Peter Clute and the Castrol Dodge, the 17 of DJ Kennington. A little bit surprising to see Kennington way back in 10th spot as at 8th, 9th, and 10th on the track right now. He didn't qualify all that well. And Dave, we've been around this field, talked about a number of different drivers. We've got to mention a driver and family that are not here this weekend. Dave Thorndike, his wife passed away this week. He was supposed to be racing here with us. Our, our thoughts are with Dave and Adam and the rest of the family as they grieve their loss. Now everybody racing with a heavy heart in the NASCAR Pinty Series pits here this weekend. Working down through turn number two, back on to the Lakeshore Boulevard straight away. Or actually, no, that is through turn number five. Now into turn number eight. I wonder if that windshield wiper distracts Kerry. It's all I can see. When we show it a head-on shot, all I can notice is that giant windshield wiper straight up and down in front of Kerry Mix. Well, this is 
a street course race. It is a road course race, and as per the rules, all of these cars must be equipped to race in the rain. Walls on both sides are not. They're ready to go. That's the reason for the wiper on Kerry Mix. A lot of these cars, actually every one of these cars, do have a red light in the back window as well that can be turned on in the event of rain. That's right, and it's not mandatory that they run a windshield wiper. There's different means of getting the water off your windshield, but if you do use a wiper, it's got to be there and it's got to be ready to work. As DJ Kennington looking to the inside, I don't think he wants to celebrate his 41st birthday back in 10th place, Dave. No. Peter Clute sort of blocked that run of the 17 midway down into turn number three. We should mention, too, we've been keeping an eye on the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. He's back on track. He's currently in 19th spot, so he could use the caution, and pretty quickly. He's going four seconds a lap faster than Larry Jackson, but he's got a long way and to go. Adam, the 95 off the pace and down to pit lane. Anthony Simone from third spot. Oh, man. As we said, any trip down pit road is an unscheduled pit stop here today. Simone was running so well at the season opener at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park and so well to start this race here. But the innovative plumbing, number 95, down pit lane. An unscheduled stop. We'll check in with Clinton Jeffrey is making his way to the pits. Clinton, what's up? Well, Anthony Simone pulls it into the pits here. They just shut the car off. He was running in third spot. Crew now going to lift the hood on the car. They're also looking under the left rear. So something has slowed up the 95 here. Crew trying to figure it out. Looks like they're concentrating on the rear wheel. So potential gear problems, maybe? We've seen a lot of that this weekend. Yeah, something in the drive line as Kennington continues to look up the inside. Peter Clute is a great road racer, though. He will defend that move without losing much ground to carry Mix. And you're right about defending. He's not blocking. He's taking a defensive line into turn number three, and that's stopping the pass opportunities for the 17. As the 46 of Brett Taylor manages to get around the three of Cole Powell. That's a battle for 12. Yeah, he's been chasing Cole Powell for many laps, and Cole Powell doesn't want to leave him out there. He's offline a little bit. I believe going to try to make a run up the inside. Not sure if he's going to get the drive to do it. It's an interesting weekend for Cole Powell. He was able to test a little bit at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. His problems now for the Wonder Bread number 25 of Larry Jackson. One of the fan favorites slowing down the back straightaway, and you can hear the sounds of the silence. Yeah, I'd, I'd be shocked if we don't go yellow. You can see the next runoff area is well around that next corner, and I can't see Larry Jackson being able to make it that far in his Wonder Bread Dodge, which has no fire left underneath. And Adam, you saw the waving blue flag coming out of turn number two. That's to indicate to the drivers that there's a problem up ahead, as we do now have a full course caution. Yeah, unlike a lot of forms of motorsports, they do not use local yellows in NASCAR, so that blue flag is just an indicator to drivers. Something is going on. One driver that had something go on is with Clinton Jeffrey right now. Well, Anthony, horrible break for you. You were in this one, running top three when uh, something went wrong with the car. What's the story? Yeah, brutal break for the innovative, innovative plumbing Dodge. We were just uh, running third, doing laps, trying to get to the end of the race, saving our tires and stuff, because this place is hard on rear tires and uh, we broke a rear axle. It's really unfortunate for all these guys. We had such a fast car this week, fastest in practice, uh, top five in qualifying, uh, running third in the race, just unbelievable our, our luck. I can't, I can't even believe it. He'll get one yet this year. Anthony has way too much practice at those interviews. <laughs> Feels so badly for Anthony Simone. He's a great race car driver. He's gonna get to the end of one of these. Coming racers making it to the big show like Toronto or Formula One in Montreal is a lifetime dream. For James Vance, driver of the number one Houston Ford Racing at the Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto, it's just that. Sitting right here and like I were watching the cars come down the back train and I was like, yo, Dad, one day I will race in this race, like mark my words. And like now we're here and we're in the show. Crazy. James, a very talented road racer. One of his teammates, though, in the CBRT stables is out. He's standing by with Clinton. Well, Larry, tough break for you here today. Uh, you got a full weekend, but this one didn't make it today. What's the story here on this car? Well, that's a, a pretty old motor there. Uh, we don't ask much of it. We short shift it. Um, let's get into one there. I guess uh, I thought I used it in there pretty easy. Shifted pretty smoothly. It uh, must be a valve train issue. So uh, 
We'll fix her up, come back to the next race, and uh, I guess we're heading to Jacosta Speedway uh, quickly. Good luck here. Drive will save. Thank you. See you. Thanks, guys. Larry's going to make the 90-minute drive to Jacasa Motor Speedway, where he will race one of the beasts of motorsports, open wheel modified on the big oval, Dave. And then he's got a wedding to attend to cap the evening off. And right now, we're going back to green here in the Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto. Tagliani will lead him into turn number one. Before the storm, when you hear those engines, not many RPMs out of them as they get into the corner. Now listen to them come by. That's where they start to scream, and this is where you start to see the fall in line, or do they? As Kennington and Mix get together, a couple of old foes of the NASCAR Pinty Series making contact into turn number three. Did they ever? The right front fender gone off of Kerry Mix's car. Let's see if DJ Kennington has a tire going down. That had to be significant contact with the left rear. And you see a new sponsor on board. The 02 TJ is now single. This gentleman offered Mix Motorsports some sponsorship to promote the fact that he's now back on the dating market. It's a NASCAR dating app at 100 miles an hour. How do you think of that? She better be able to read fast. <laughs> but Mix getting some attention on the track. Good news, yet to pit. So that car seems to be going along okay. Same for DJ Kennington, who was right on board the Spectra Premium 04. Kerry Mix knows how to drive a race car without fenders on it. I mean, he's an old pro, he's aggressive, he's seen it all before. J.F. Dumoulin battling there with the 59 of Gary Clute, who is looking more like a drifter through turn two down the straightaway. I've noticed that 59 is a little bit twitchy in the early going of this race. And we're on lap 15 out of 35. If you're a little bit loose right now, you are going to be a lot loose as we get later in the race. Moves being made on Lakeshore Boulevard. Here goes Kevin Lacroix. Yeah, look who's in the midst of that. Lacroix the bumper to bumper. Lacroix tuning number 70. Four will move past the Kubota number three of Cole Powell, and that's a battle for 13th, so the 74 is on the move. I guarantee you what Cole Powell is doing right now is trying to figure out how the 74 just drove two car lengths away. So he'll be working with his feet, working with the brake, working with the throttle and steering wheel. You have to learn so quickly in this type of racing when you get the chance to follow one of the best. Cole Powell's a smart driver, though. He'll follow him, and he will learn every single lap. There you see the top three. Alex Tagliani, your leader. The Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger running second. Cameron still taking a look on the WeatherTech number 47 of LP Dumoulin. It looks so calm looking at him inside the race car, and he probably is that calm. But when you're standing beside the fence watching them go by at 150 miles an hour, it doesn't feel so calm, Dave. Cameron is anything but happy following the number 47 as there's the 74 picking up another spot, 12th place around the Circuit Acura number 24 of Donald Tiege. He'll now close in on the 46 of Brad Taylor. This is the type of racetrack where you're going to make a pass and then you've got to follow in line for a few corners, which we're doing right now. The next passing zone, he'll hope to be close enough to Taylor that he can make a move. This car called Thunder out of the 22 pin. You see the sticker still on the dash of the 74 and Kevin Lacroix is showing it a good ride here today. As he gets closer to the front, they will get harder to pass. He's coming up on a couple of drivers from CBRT having a great day. Yeah, guys, the CBRT bunch are having a pretty good day. James Vance running in 10th, Brett Taylor running in 11th, and a new driver in a couple of weeks for the CBRT bunch, Julia Landauer, Stanford graduate, survivor contestant. Just need a little more excitement in your life, I guess. Oh, yeah, that's why we're super excited to go back racing this year. And uh, I met Joey about a year ago from CBRT, and we've just been staying in touch and got a great opportunity to run a few races this season. Nice that you get some experience in the NASCAR Pinty Series. You've got some other racing experience in your background as well. Yeah, so we ran the K&N series for the last two years, and so to be able to come up here and go against veteran drivers who've been racing the series for years and learn a new car is going to be really cool. I have a lot to prove. I really want to show that I can be competitive, so I'm really looking forward to it. Looking forward to 
forward to seeing you later this season. Thank you so much. We've always got room for more competitors, Dave, especially. I like the spark that Julia has. Whoa, big, problems. big problems. And it's the 0 2 of Kerry Mix and the 1 of James Vance. Speaking of the CBR team, team and caution on the field once again. The hood on Kerry Mix's race car is as high as the windshield. I don't know how he's looking ahead of him to see where he's going right now. Good news, that was a tire wall, so the damage appears to be minimal on the one, not so much on the 0-2, the Leland Industries Ford Fusion of Kerry Mix. Let's have another look. So they're, they're well off the line there as they make contact. We're getting reports that the one might have gotten into the 0-2 a little bit. This this could be payback. Looks like it may have been. That's a... Oh, that definitely looks like a bit of payback there. It's a little bit of bumper tag going into turn number five and Kerry Mix is down pit lane. I don't know what you do to repair that as they're going to pull him into the pit box. Kerry Mix can't really tell where he is and Sam Putnam, NASCAR official there, saying, nope, you guys are done. So he must have seen something that would cause a safety issue and tells them that they got to shut it down. And you see the crossed flags for the halfway mark as we continue under caution. Jason White in the number 28. Powder Ventures excavating Chevrolet. Makes a quick stop down pit lane. Tagliani continues to lead here on the streets of Toronto. Welcome back to the streets of Toronto as NASCAR on TSN brings you the Pinty's Grand Prix. A lot of chicken wings have been sampled here thanks to the good folks at Pinty's. We have their sample trailer plus the Pinty's Pub and Grill in turn number one. Both very popular areas. Well, the view from the Pinty's Pub and Grill in turn one is the best view at the racetrack. It's amazing. Get to see that braking zone and the passing zone and that's where the field is headed right now. Restart number two. I can't believe how they push the limits under braking. I mean, these guys are driving as hard as they can into that turn. Nobody able to gain an advantage. It's a land rush start. At one point, they were five wide going into turn number one. And look at Gary Clute. He's digging for second spot on Andrew Ranger. Up on the outside, yeah. Yeah, J.F. Dumoulin up the outside. Clute on the inside. They're door to door going down into turn three. Clute with the advantage. He's got the line coming off. Saw a quick glimpse of the number 74. Kevin Lacroix continues to pick up spots as the field single file now through the tight twisties here on the streets of Toronto. Well, and they have to get single file as we ride on board with Cole Powell. He was the first car doubled up, but obviously they've gotten back to single file. You just can't comfortably drive side by side here. And there you see, see Dumoulin not happy following the 59. He took a look into turn number eight as they work through nine, now 10. Next good spot, you try and get a run out of turn 11 and down the front straightaway into turn one, the braking zone. And we haven't said a whole lot about the track this year, Dave, but there are some changes. Turn one is one of them. There's some fresh pavement. I'm hearing from the guys. It's a little bit smoother going down into the corner, which should make it more even, whether you're inside, outside, or otherwise. Smooth pavement makes for comfortable braking. Well, I remember last year, it was so rough in that braking zone. Need to turn number one, so it's nice to see the promoters here at the track doing some work, spending some money, and making the track that much better. But Dave, they spent some money today at the driver's meeting. Did you hear about that? I did, yeah. They're offering a $5,000 bonus for the winner of today's NASCAR Pinty Series race, and it goes deeper than that. An extra $2,500 for second place, extra grand for third. Many thanks to Jeff Atkinson, Kim Green, Kevin Savory, Great promoters here in Toronto, and they've really opened their arms to the NASCAR Pinty Series to be the premier show on Saturday. Good look at the 46 of Brett Taylor, and how about the 79 of Pete Shepard III? Brand new sponsor on board here this weekend, VRX Simulators. They have racing simulators, flight simulators, and they're the wraparound screens. They are fantastic. If you're ever on iRacing, these are the simulators to get. James Vance working his way back through the field. You know what I'm excited about with the deal Pete Shepard put together is the sponsor is actually here this weekend. Not just on the race car, but he's out here with the team experiencing it firsthand. And Pete Shepard having a great run here today, excited about that partnership moving forward in the NASCAR Pinty Series. You know, Pete Shepard hadn't done a ton of racing over the last few years. He picked and chose the events he ran, 
So for him to come out and race on the streets of Toronto, he's not the most accomplished road racer, but he's giving it a good go today. You see the red flash, you see the nose peeking out, that's a 74 of Kevin Lacroix, and that is a textbook pass into turn number three underneath Peter Clue. To the eighth position he goes, DJ Kennington running in seventh in that Castro Edge number 17. He'll be up next for Kevin Lacroix. Watch last year's winner at work. Till two o'clock in the morning last night to get this car prepared and then worked all the way through the day right up until the green flag here today just to get that car running and ready for Kevin Lacroix. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dave, but this I think is as close as Andrew Ranger's been to Alex Tagliani with the exception of restarts all day long. He has been closing the gap. Alex Tagliani has been comfortably in front since the drop of the original green in the EpiPen Rona number 18 as we ride on board with both of the top two. And if you remember, go back one year, they weren't in this race at this point. They had crashed out much, much earlier. Yeah, there's a history between these two, so it'll be interesting to see when the 27 does get close to the 18, if he has a memory as well. We're going to have a look at another beautiful pass. James Vance has really been aggressive in these tight corners all the way up over the rumble strips to make a move on Pete Shepard. And there's a little wave saying thank you out the window. That's for 12th spot. Give it to James Vance, who has a huge group of people on the front straightaway cheering him on today. And he waved all of his fingers that time out the window <laughs> at Pete Shepard. A look back from your leader to this car on board, the number 27, Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger. Will he try something in a turn three? You know, I, Tagliani has been running that defensive line. Here goes Cameron again. Finally, no, he still can't get Ooh, up there. Contact, though, as the door suddenly closed across the nose of the Pie GMC, number 22. And you remember, turn number three is where the race ended for the 22 one year ago. And have a look there. His water bottle is gone. Yeah, the holder right to the bottom left of the screen. There was a water bottle in that holder at the start of this race. So hope he's not getting too thirsty. And I hope it's not down under the pedals by his feet. Well, it definitely will be concerning for that driver. And look, now the gap is evaporated between the top two. Andrew Ranger is sniffing for the lead here in second spot, right on the back bumper, the 18 of Alex Tagliani. Start to play with the rear view mirror of the car in front of you. If you're Andrew Ranger, you're going to be moving side to side as much as you can. See Tagliani keep looking up into the mirror, looking up into the mirror. He wants to know where Andrew's running. But he's not a driver to get rattled. Alex Tagliani has a win here on the streets of Toronto. Andrew Ranger has a pair of them. So they are two veterans of the sport and veterans of the NASCAR Pinty Series here on the streets of Toronto. And veteran or not, you have to know when it's time to brace for impact as Kevin Lacroix has got around DJ Kennington for that seventh position. Not saying Ranger's going to hit Tagliani, but that's what he'd Whoa, be looking into his mirrors. Turn number three, and that's Cole Powell and the 79 of Pete Shepard. Shepard trying to get that car turned around. It is tight. Cole Powell, lots of unburned, well, his burnt fuel now sitting in the headers. Trying to refire the cops' build all. Kubota number three. And the NASCAR officials calling for a full course caution. We really do have to tip our hats to Sherry Putnam, Jeff Wilcox, Trevor Hambly, and all the NASCAR staff on hand here this weekend and every weekend. Make these shows run smoothly. So down and wow. Powell, he was having problems with the rear end yesterday, locking up, spinning him around, and that's what happened. Let's ride along. That sounds like wheel hop. He was four or five car lengths back of Shepard, and when he went into the corner, spun Shepard out with the back end of his race car. That's impressive. So a quick red flag because the fire had spread to the side of the car. They put that out. Cars are rolling again. We'll take a quick break here on TSN. 
Welcome back to the Pinty's Grand Prix in Toronto. I'm Dave Bradley, along with Adam Ross and Todd Lewis, Clint and Jeffrey, both trackside. 44-year-old Alex Tagliani is led from the drop of the green as we get set for restart number three here on lap 29. You know, I keep noticing different things when they go to these in-cars. How calm uh, Tagliani's grip was on the wheel. I would have a death grip on that thing trying to squeeze the life out of it. During a caution, you get to take a break. Now, you get to grip the wheel. Green flag once again back up in the air. 29 laps in the books. And look at them all fighting for space into turn number one. What a move by Andrew Ranger drops to the inside. It might cost him J.F. Dumoulin with a great run to the outside. Oh, J.F. trying to hang on on the outside of turn number two. Now he's got the 59 of Gary Clute to the inside. That'll drag race down Lakeshore Boulevard. L.P. Dumoulin were on board with him in the WeatherTech Dodge. Let's see if he can take advantage of the situation. James Vance had a great start as well as the 59 and the 04 go side by side through turn number three. Give the advantage to the 59 of Clute. And there's the 74 of Cadillac Watt continuing his charge to the front. Yeah, we saw someone smoke the brakes up ahead. Wow, Donald Teach had to really back out of it to avoid Lacroix there. On board Jason White in the 28. You see no damage to the VRX simulators, number 79 of Pete Shepard, so that's good news. He's back up to pace towards the tail of the field. Alex Tagliani's been getting great restarts. At the end of the first lap after a restart, it seems he always has a car length or two over Ranger. That doesn't sound like much, but it's enough to give the veterans some breathing room. And you see some damage now to the nose of the Chevy Camaro. That is the 22 of Marc Antoine Cameron. Look at Ranger. He's happy to tuck in behind the 18 once again into turn number one. Five laps to go. We're on lap 30 out of 35 as we ride on board with Kevin Lacroix, who's running in the 10th position. Yeah, he's falling back just a little bit. We'll ride on board. He was moving forward, and then he started to stumble a little bit. Seems to be going okay now as he pulls up alongside the 46 of Brent Taylor. Looked like somebody was smoking there. I'm not sure where the smoke was coming from, but there's a blue haze over the straightaway. You can see the, the left front wheel is on a pretty significant lean on the 74. Bumper to bumper car of Kevin Lacroix, but he's hanging on to it. Watch his hands. Riding on board. Or, I should say this is the uh, 46. This is Brett, Brett Taylor we're riding on board with behind Kevin Lacroix. tip our hat to Kevin Lacroix. He is aggressively driving a race car he has never sat in before today. And, and that was the thing. He was confident and not cocky when you talked about him. And he's like, I'm a race car driver. This is a race car. I'm just going to get in and drive it. And that really is, I believe, his mentality. But you still have to give a lot of credit to actually being able to go out and do that. There's a good look at Marc Antoine Cameron in the Paye GMC Chevrolet Camaro. Lots of PIA representatives at nearly every one of these NASCAR Pinty Series stops as a 59 of Gary Clute sails the back end once again. Man, oh man, he's got to be having fun driving that car. But you said it about GM PIA. They are bringing a lot of people to each and every race and having a great time doing it. Five laps to go now, so it is getting down to the end of this one. If you're going to make a move, you're running out of time to do it. And Cameron is starting to ramp up the pressure on the 47. There's a good look back to the 17 of DJ Kennington, who is chasing Mark Antoine Cameron. You know we're getting close to the money laps when DJ Kennington starts to pop up in the top five. How about this group, though? They've caught the 59 of Gary Clute, and problems now. He was falling off the pace, as we mentioned, and now it looks like something has broken in the right front of the bumper-to-bumper -bumper total number 74. Wow, what a tough weekend for Kevin Lacroix. Let's have a look. We're right on board. See James Vance smoke the tire ahead of him, and... Oh, that's a significant shot to the right front. Have another angle. Looks like it just pushed straight through the turn. Yeah, the car just never rotated in that corner. Poor Kevin Lacroix, poor Don Thompson Jr. That's a look at the crew chief right there talking to his driver. The window net is down. That's the sign that the driver is all right. But it's been a tough weekend for Kevin Lacroix here at Exhibition Place.
Welcome back to the Pinty's Grand Prix in Toronto, getting set for a green-white checker finish. Dave White is the crew chief for the 27 car of Andrew Ranger. He's been hounding that 18 all race as he got something for the end. Yeah, you know, we saved a little bit there at the start. I think we've got a pretty good Mopar Dodge. Um, these turn ones on these restarts are always scary. You know, we're trying to get through there the best we can. Green-white checkered, I'm sure it'll be some three-white action. But, you know, we'll see. Uh, this is racing. That's what we come for. So we'll see if we can put this Mopar Dodge up front. I'll let you get back to it. Let's go up to Clinton. Thanks, Todd. I'm here with Tyler Case. Tyler, crew chief here for Alex Tag Land. You guys have led since lap one. How's this going to play out? Well, I hope it's just a clean finish. The Rona EpiPen Camaro's been really fast. Alex's been doing a great job with it, taking care of it. Hopefully we've got enough to finish it off. Well, his car is in good hands, but this is going to be good. A restart. Green, white, checkered here in the Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto. There's the green, and here's the rush to turn one. Ranger to the inside of Tagliani. What a move by Andrew Ranger. He clears Tag into the first corner. Contact between Dumoulin and Tagliani. We are in NASCAR overtime, and it shows at the Spectra Premium 04 up to second spot. Tagliani back in third. Down the back straight away they go. They made significant contact into turn one. I, I'm not sure how much damage you can see fenders flying on the 18. Tagliani got a significant push from the 59 of Clute as well. Side by side, deeper in the field, and big contact between the, tw the uh, 22 of Cameron and the 47. And here comes Tag through to take back second. Tagliani, he's still got one side of the race car with no marks on it. But he's going to use up as much as he has to to try to close in on Andrew Ranger. Oh, he probably was not happy to be shuffled back. Let's have another look at this restart. How did he get from the outside to the inside without J.F. Dumoulin making contact? He saw an opening. He got in there. Breaks it up. No contact with Alex Tagliani. And the white flag is out. One more lap. 11 turns for Andrew Ranger and some smoke off the right front of the Rona EpiPen number 18, Chevy Camaro. That's a significant body rub on Alex Tagliani's right front. And this is a lot of strain on that car to make a full lap here in Toronto. Look at the battle for third, Gary Clute. I thought he used his tires up 20 laps ago. Well, Gary Clute has found some extra speed. There you see the smoke off the 18 as Tagliani hard on the brakes. Looks like Dumoulin is going to take that defensive line into turn number three. Can Clute come back underneath him? Not that time as we ride on board the driver of the 18. Still that calm grip on the steering wheel. He's in his office, Dave, and he's got about five more turns to try to make a move. Well, he has to get up there as Vance may have brushed the wall there after making contact. Andrew Ranger in the Mopar Dodge continues to lead. Coming down to the wire, we're on the final lap. Ranger leads by about eight car lengths over Tagliani. We should mention the number 28 of Jason White is off the pace. Looks like something has gone amiss in that car. Riding on board, your race leader through the final couple turns. Andrew Ranger will lead him off turn number 11. He'll see the checkered flag wave this time. Andrew Ranger, the winner in Toronto. He is excited and deservedly so. James Vance, I can't believe after that contact with the wall, still came home seventh. Great drive for Donald Teach ninth. Pete Shepard the third with the top ten. What a race. And Andrew Ranger brings us today's Mopar winning moment. When we return, we'll talk to the two-time former champion. Miles and congratulations from the 2017 as Andrew Ranger climbs out, gives the thumbs up for another victory here in Toronto on the streets of Exhibition Place. Two-time winner, this the third victory. What a move. Take me through that final pass on the green-white checker to get the victory. <laughs> oh, I was very nervous, seriously, uh, here in Toronto. Uh, that corner is so tight and uh, I knew the Dumoulin would probably try something or so the moment where I saw the door open, I jump on the inside and I really take the lead. I come very deep. I push a little bit Alex, but uh, it was for a green white checker. So uh, very happy about my sponsor, Mopar, my team, everybody are here. So fantastic. 
Andrew Ranger victorious once again on the streets of Toronto. Well, here with Alex Tagliani. Tags, man, what a day. You were in this battle all afternoon. Tough end to it, though. What happened in turn one? Well, that's the way sometimes these races go. I mean, um, we had an amazing car, thanks to the 22 racing team. The boys did a fantastic job all weekend. Uh, you know, restarts, yeah, it's, everybody's gonna go very aggressive on the inside. Um, you know, some people went in, uh, it was last minute move. I think Andrew did a great job, uh, good job to him. But uh, the 04 was, was last minute and uh, he damaged our car and we can challenge Andrew. I think uh, the fans would have had a, an amazing fight at the end if a uh, car would have not been damaged. He led all day, didn't quite get the finish he needed though. Oh, he still musters up a smile though as we'll take a look at your VP Racing Fuels or finishing order and have a look. James Vance recovers for a seventh place finish and Pete Shepard the third, tenth place in the 79. 11th on back, we're going to look at all drivers who think they could have done a little bit better here this weekend. But boy, what a tough weekend it was for Kevin Lacroix, 16th. Todd's with a third place finisher. JF, you equal your career best finish here in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Talk about your drive forward today. I mean, it was, uh, you know, in the start, our line moved forward, so I was pretty happy about it. And I was fighting with Clute a lot. It was hard to pass. It was faster than him. Try to keep the car under me. And the last restart, I thought I could follow a tag. And, but Andrew, did a great move, just quiz in front of me, hard break in. I try to go through it, and we touch. So I finished third. I'm happy with it. Obviously, we need to keep moving up, keep working hard. Zoom in competition, prep great cars. Uh, Spectra Premium, 04, Belmar, Daniel Kepo machine was there. We'll be back. And the finish today has shaken the point standings. You see Andrew Ranger and LP Dumoulin now tied atop the points. I'm going to point to another tie. Cole Powell and DJ Kennington, 14 points back, going into a pair of oval races out west. They're going to move up. Always fun, the Western road trip for the NASCAR Pinty Series. As Norris McDonald, the Canadian Motorsport Hall of Famer, he is the hardware, hands it over to today's winner, Andrew Ranger. Big smiles on the podium here in Toronto. They battled like warriors on our first of two street courses. This NASCAR on TSN race has been brought to you by VP Racing Fuels. By Honey Goo from Clean Flow. One Honey Baloo. And by Total Quartz Engine Oil. High technology for your engine. The champagne is about to fly after Tag gets a sip of his. And up next, Twin 125s in Saskatoon. From all of us at Fuel Media Lab, we'll see you at West. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.